Crime One and Chaos contains adult language and graphic content. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, Chaos Kids. I'm Amber. And I'm Naomi. And this is Crime Wine and Chaos. Hello. Yes, you can. And you I must. Cannot. I cannot. Dance it out. You'll I feel better. I don't have it in me today. Hi. Mm. How are you? Hi, sister. Great. Thanks. How are you? I've had a day. I woke up way too early because I don't sleep anymore. I had way more coffee than I normally do because it's the only thing my stomach does not fully reject anymore, which is the weirdest fucking thing. That is And I'm exhausted. So more coffee, more coffee. I feel like I'm in my 20s all over again, just living off of coffee and like nicotine. Uh, and then I found out when I got home just before we started to started to record that, um, my ex father-in-law who I've known for 24 years, Jeez. grandfather to my beloved child, uh, passed away this morning. So Aww. that was a big fucking bummer. I bet that it's age we're moving bummer. into that age, Amber, uh, I'm sorry. I, I hate to break this to you, but this is what's what's happening to you. We're moving into that age now where it's less weddings and babies and less more funerals. You know what I mean? I know. I <laughs> listen. This I know. This I know. It's oh my god. Mm. It's a sad reality. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's so weird too when you don't feel that old. No. You're like, really? We're at the age where our parents are going to die? When did I get to that age? Yeah. You know, it's funny, too, because my my mother-in-law, so she's a a widow now, and she told me years ago that uh, she looks in the mirror and still can't believe still can't believe like how old she is because in her mind, she's still like 21. And I didn't quite get it then because I was in my 20s when she was telling me this. But now (laughs) that I'm like Mm -hmm. approaching 45, which is, you know, depending on how old I live, I might have already been middle age. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. I totally get Mm it. I totally get it. I get it it too. So I get it. Yeah, that's my Uh. day. How are you? Um, I'm pretty good. Thank you. Uh, let me think here. I've got uh, band practice tomorrow. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and we've got cousin weekend this weekend, which I am thrilled about. Cannot this will come wait. out like five weeks at later, but cannot wait. The point For is cool cousins cabin camping. Oh my God. Oh, what, <laughs> a, what other C word can we throw in there? Cavorting really with excited. the cousins. <laughs> Oh my God. You know what I was thinking about though? This is fucking terrible. I'll edit oh, this I love I it. Tell to. me something okay. terrible. Can you imagine being one of the cousins and finding out there's a cool cousin club that you weren't <laughs> invited to? Let's put it this way. Can you fucking imagine? <laughs> Let's put it this way. None of those cousins want to be in the cool cousins club with us anyway. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, I feel honored that I've secured my spot because I'm like, what if there is like a sub club that I don't know about that I'm not fucking included in? You know what? That's a club you don't want to be included in. So it's okay, fine. Okay. It's fine. Oh, I feel really honored. What are you drinking? I saw Thank a wine you for glass. Asking. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for asking. Okay. I'm going to really do sweet baby Jake proud. <laughs> and a reveal. A red no. wine from Spain. <laughs> Nailed it. Eat your heart out, sweet baby Jake. Um, it's it's tasty. Good. It's tasty. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Well, sister, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a crime story today. And I need to just mm-hmm. like jump into it here because, uh, all right. So for the record, you guys, I'm, I'm speaking to our listeners now, Amber, um, Amber, should I leave? No, it's okay. You can, oh. hear, you can hear this. You can hear okay. this. Okay. Feel Amber, like Amber kind of told me one day, you know what? You, you say the things. And so today I'm going to say the things on a particular Perfect. topic. And so we're going to say the things via a specific crime, but we're going to go on a little bit of a tangent from that crime before we come back. And today, Amber, I am going to tell you about Lucia Perez Montero. Does that name mean anything to you? No, but it's a beautiful name. Yes. And she was a beautiful young girl. 
Uh, Lucia Perez Montero loved art, rock music, and animals. Ever since she was a little girl, she wanted to be a veterinarian. She was also really talented as an artist, even having won a school art scholarship, and her room was covered in her drawings. Wow. Wow. Lucia lived in Mar del Plata, Argentina, which is a coastal city roughly 250 miles south of the capital city of Buenos Aires. Okay. She and her mother, Marta, were super close, sharing with each other each day over a mug of bitter mate, which is an Argentinian tea. Uh, Lucia would rub her mother's feet in the evenings when Marta was especially tired Marta is a nurse. Her wow. husband, yeah, her husband, Lucia's father, Guillermo, was a, is a sheet metal worker. Uh, Guillermo remembers fondly the times he and Lucia went to music concerts together and their own time spent over a cuppa and how she would regularly remind him to take his medicine. Lucia was mm. always ready to help others. Is, um, is she an only child? No. My next sentence. (laughs) Lucia was the youngest of Marta and Guillermo's two children. Her big brother, Matias, and she were also very close. He would take her to school every morning, and she confided everything in him and told him nearly all her secrets. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they were super tight. Um, uh, I think at this time... Uh, So this was 2016. Matias was in college. He was going to law school. So smart, smart kid too. Yeah, no shit. Uh, Lucia was 16 years old when on October 18th, 2016, she found herself at the home of a different Matias, Matias Gabriel Furias. Some reports say that he and two other men snatched or kidnapped her from out front of her high school. But other reports indicate that Lucia had bought weed from Matias the day prior, and he had invited her to his place the next day. It's not entirely clear how she ended up at his house, but she was there, along with Juan Pablo Afidani and Alejandro Maciel. So, so far, it sounds like she is the only woman. She's the only woman. woman. Girl. Well, she's 16. Girl. She's a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Matias is in his early 20s and Juan Pablo is in his 40s. I don't know how old Alejandro is. In his fucking 40s? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? No, oh, just wait. Okay. Hours later, the three men would drop her body off at a local hospital where staff initially assumed they were treating her for an overdose. They worked to resuscitate her, and only after they were unable to do so did they discover the extent of the trauma to her body. (sighs) The picture that emerged of what Lucia had been through by way of the evidence on her body and police interviews with the three men responsible would shock the whole of Argentina and then the world. Okay, is this going to make me... Yes, this is bad. You guys, this is all really, really bad, and I'm telling you... What I know, because it is widely reported and it needs to be said. Okay. According to police reports, the men were drinking, smoking weed, and doing cocaine, and they forced Lucia to as well. Okay. And then these pieces of shit all raped her repeatedly. And I don't even want to say what else they did to her, but like I said, this was in every newspaper about this event. Mm Mm-hmm. It has been described as, quote, impaled by a wooden spike. Okay. I just, okay. I need a minute. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's exactly what you think it is. Okay. Okay. And it was this that is believed to be what ultimately caused Lucia's death. She actually had a heart attack. One that is not uncommon in torture victims when the level of pain becomes too great for the system to bear. Okay. Uh. 
When they were done, the three men cleaned her body, redressed her, and dumped her at the hospital. Are you okay? Do you need a minute? Um, I might. Um, I probably not alone in this, but I have uh, a very hard, very hard time um, listening to horrific sexual assaults. I understand more than anything. I get it. Else, um, but, I've you know, had I, time to sit with this information. Yeah, I actually am feeling a little queasy. But um, what listeners don't know is I don't even know how many. Oh, you have to go behind the paywall to hear it. But uh, the Junko Ferrerto, yes, case, yes, that actually took several hours to record because of how many times I needed to pause and go get some air do you to get to, through it. Do you need to pause? Um, and get some air. That was the. That that was the extent of it. We're not going to okay. go over that anything like that ever again. Okay. Um, okay. No, I think I'm okay. Okay. I'm gonna drink some water. Okay. Keep if going. she could, um, she had to live through it. The least I can do is listen to her story. When I was researching this, I cried so hard I had to like walk away. Otherwise, I was going to smash my computer. It doesn't get better. Um, Matias Farias. Juan Pablo Afadani and Alejandro Maciel were arrested and charged with, quote, this is long and weird, but it's Argentina. I don't know. They have different laws and the way they word it is strange. Sexual abuse aggravated by the use of narcotics followed by death in an ideal contest with femicide. Concealment mm -hmm. aggravated by the gravity of the preceding event and mm -hmm. possession of narcotics with the intent to sell. Wow. Concealing what happened. That, that's its own... Mm -hmm. thing. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And I noticed they have femicide. They do. We're going to talk about that today. Okay. Wow. New, news of the brutal gang rape and murder of Lucia Perez exploded across Argentina. Lucia was a perfect victim, beautiful, kind, young, and brutalized for the simple fact that she was a girl and they could. Immediately following this unbelievably brutal crime, a mass protest was organized under the banner of the Ni Una, Una Menos rallying cry. Ni Una Menos, translated from Spanish, means not one less. Ni Una Menos is a Latin American fourth wave grassroots feminist movement, which started in Argentina and has spread across several, if not all, of Latin American countries. They campaign against gender-based violence. On its official website, it defines itself as a, quote, collective scream against machista violence. Mm. Wow. The campaign was started by a collective of Argentine fem female artists, journalists, and academics. The movement became nationally recognized with the use of the hashtag Ni Una Menos, which spurred on massive demonstrations on June 3rd, 2015. So like a year prior to Lucia's death, the protest right. was organized after the murder of 15 year old Chiara Paez, who was found buried underneath her boyfriend's house on May 11th because she wanted to keep the baby and he did not. So he beat her to death when she was a few weeks pregnant. Jesus fucking Christ. And a month prior to that, the husband of a kindergarten teacher who had requested a divorce repeated, reportedly barged into her classroom and slit the teacher's throat in front of her students. No. Yes. In front of a kindergarten class? Yes. What the fuck is wrong with these men? The movement has grown into a continental alliance of feminist forces. The movement regularly holds protests against femicides, but has also touched on topics such as gender roles sexual harassment, gender pay gap, sexual objectification, legality of abortion, sex workers' rights, and transgender rights. Mm -hmm. In response to Lucy Lucia's rape and murder, Ni Una Menos called for all women to join a mass strike action. They took a one-hour pause from work and study in the early afternoon and dressed in all black as a symbol of mourning for what they labeled Miércoles Negro, or Black Wednesday. Hmm. These protests became region-wide, giving the movement greater international momentum. There were also street demonstrations in Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, and Spain. Wow. Wow. 
That's fucking incredible. A week later, a protest also took place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, which has been considered yet another clear sign that Ni Una Menos has become a rallying cry for the region. On March 8th, 2017, Ni Una Una Menos took part in the international women's strike. The strike was spearheaded in the U.S. by the leaders of the Women's March on Washington, who, in a call to arms letter in The Guardian, pointed to Ni Una Menos as an inspiration. Wow. So let's talk about femicide. Femicide Mm -hmm. is defined as an intentional killing with a gender-related motivation and may be driven by stereotyped gender roles, discrimination towards women and girls, unequal power relations between women and men, or harmful social norms. Mm -hmm. In Argentina, a woman is killed every 30 hours. What the fuck? Globally speaking, in 2021, around 45,000 women and girls were killed by their intimate partners or other family family members, which includes fathers, mothers, uncles, and brothers. This means that on average, more than five women or girls are killed every every hour by someone in their own family. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. Current and former intimate partners are by far the most likely perpetrators of femicide, accounting for an average of 65% of all intimate partner and family related killings. Wow. Yeah, that sounds about right. Additionally, these numbers, as bad as they are, do not reflect the full extent of the danger women face just for existing. Mm -hmm. No, it it certainly doesn't. In many cases, only gender-related killings perpetrated by an intimate partner or family member are counted as femicides. But we know that gender-related killings take place in many contexts beyond these private relationships. They can be of re- course. Yeah. They can be related to rape or sexual violence by someone unknown to the victim. They can be linked to harmful practices such as female genital mutilation or so-called honor-based violence. They could be a result of hate crimes linked to sexual orientation or gender identity or connected with armed conflict, gangs, human trafficking, and other forms of organized crime. And I want to be clear here. Some have called for a change in name to gender side in order to be more inclusive. But in my mind, femicide is not female homicide. It is feminine homicide and is inclusive of trans women who are absolutely women. Full stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well said, sister. Absolutely. Femicide is a hate crime. Yes. Although the first femicide law to ever be adopted wasn't until 2007 in Costa Rica. Interesting. Yeah. uh, Yeah. In the intervening 16 years, all of Latin America has adopted femicide as a hate crime with its own legal definition and ramifications, as have many other countries around the world, but not the U.S. No. Although not for lack of trying by some of us. At the end of 2021, the Center for Women's Global Leadership at Rutgers University in the U.S. launched a petition calling on the United Nations to declare the 6th of December as the International Day to End Femicide. On that day in 1989, a man killed 14 women at the University of Montreal, blaming them for his failure to gain entrance to the university's engineering program, an event that came to be known as the Montreal Massacre. Oh, what, what the, blaming them? Oh, you've never heard that story? It's crazy. No, why pants. did he, bl- what the fuck? Was, what, it was why? a total, it was a total incel. It was like one of those big Mamma Jamma incel massacres of women. He went into an engineering classroom. He literally had, he had his big Mamma Jamma gun. He literally like separated the room and made the women stand on one side and the men stand on another. And then he sent all the men out of the room and then he murdered all the women. Fucking piece of shit. Yeah. So the women of Latin America are protesting and taking to the streets. And that same day, three men attacked and gang raped a 19 year old because this shit never stops. Oh my God. We carry rape whistles, mace or car keys protruding from our fists. Tell our friends where we're going and with whom cover our drinks or dump them. When we come back from the bathroom, use the buddy system and generally live lives at various levels of vigilance because we live in a world where we are considered by many men as objects to be possessed, controlled, used, abused, discarded, and exterminated at the will and the whims of those men. 
Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Two years after Lucia's murder on November 26, 2018, three male judges, Facundo Gomez Urso, Aldo Carnavale, and Pablo Vinas, found the three suspects not guilty of the first two charges. That would be the charges of sexual abuse aggravated by the use of narcotics followed by death in an ideal contest with femicide and concealment aggravated by the gravity of the preceding event. Not guilty. What the fuck? During the oral defense, the judges claimed the sexual assault and murder, quote, could not be proved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It couldn't be proved that no. she had a wooden stake shoved into her? Nope. That couldn't be proved? Nope. She did that to herself? I guess. Lucia's family Ugh. had pushed for the men to be charged with, quote, sexual abuse followed by death, but Farias and Afadani were only found guilty of supplying drugs to a minor in a school zone. No. Sentenced in to a- oh. eight years behind bars plus a fine. What the fuck? Maciel, the fuck? who had been charged only with concealment of the crime, was absolved. I have no words for this. I have through, no words. Right. Through their sentencing, these three male judges essentially declared Lucia Perez Montero, quote, unrapeable. I'm sorry, what? They argued that they don't discard the quote existence of so-called gender based violence, but quote, that doesn't mean that this should be used as a shield to hide facts that go diametrically opposed to that. The sentence reads this. Everything was normal and natural. It was all perfectly wanted and consented to by Lucia Perez. In this case, there has been no physical or psychological violence, subordination or humiliation, and least of all objectification. She is not here to say that. Right. What the fuck? Where are they getting that information from? Uh, They read her text messages and decided that she was a strong-willed girl and she could have said no if she didn't want it. Against three fucking men who are much older than her, one of them old enough to be her father. No. Oh, my God. I'm so... Why? I'm so mad. I am so fucking mad. The dehumanizing sentence portrayed Lucia Perez Montero as a promiscuous drug addict and claimed that her, quote, strong personality immunized her from becoming a victim of sexual assault. The judges determined that Lucia was assiduous of having sex with men she barely knew, but this was her choice and only when she wanted to. They added... We can attest clearly the level of self-determination that Lucia had. She had a personality that is anything but submissive. Her own brother testified that she had a strong personality and that she hid details of her sex life from her own mother. She was not the sort of person that could be easily pressured into having sex without her consent. Even though she was young, she had enough capacity to say no. Oh my fucking God. First of all, every teenager male or female, conceals all kinds of shit from their parents. Second of all, this wasn't about being pressured into having sex. This was a violent fucking attack. She didn't have the opportunity to consent or not consent. That's right. Oh my God. I fucking hate everything. Oh my God. And does, sorry, does Argentina just have, they don't have a jury system? Is it just a bench trial with judges? Is that- I didn't dig into their system- but it, this particular trial was definitely just a panel of three judges. Wow. Three fucking dudes. Yes. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. One of the judges, Carnavale, wrote that although he didn't want to talk about Lucia's sex life, quote, it is important to reinforce the idea that she would never be with anyone without her consent. Oh, my God. I don't even know what I would do to control myself if I was her mother. I would be, I would be being put away for many years for killing three judges. I think I, I I can't control my rage right now. And I, I can't even, I can't even imagine being her mom and how this feels. No, no. In the sentence, he reproduced multiple texts taken from her cell phone, showing her talking about sex 
refusing sexual advances from men, as well as sending suggestive pictures. Quote, from these chats, we can see clearly that her experiences in this subject dispel completely the possibility that she could have been sexually assaulted, he said. No, from these chats, she sounds like a very normal 16-year-old human. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on. What the f- mm-hmm. uh, Oh, man. Lucia's mother, Marta, who is a fucking badass, said the message from these judges, judges was clear. Quote, you are disposable. You are a thing. You don't exist. So I can fuck you until you're dead. I can drug you until you're dead, and I'll do what I want with your life. Yep. She said this sentence was like killing Lucia again. Mm -hmm. Quote, they killed her, those men, took her alive from my house and brought her dead to the hospital, she added. But we will continue to fight. In 2020, a higher court quashed this fucked up ruling. It criticized Mm. harshly the judge's inexplicable focus on the conduct of the victim prior to her murder, their probe of her personal life, and the use of intolerable prejudices and suppositions based on gender stereotypes. Thank God. And also like, this isn't a judge. This is three judges. Three You don't have a single judge on that fucking panel that is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right? That's, that is scary. That is machista violence. That is machista culture. Yeah. Because what other cases have these three judges heard that is fuck? Oh my God. That is terrifying. In November 2021, the legal body that investigates the conduct of judges, the magistrate's prosecution jury, went one step further, announcing that a hearing into their conduct would take place. It suspended them immediately and docked their pay 40%. Good. A new trial date for those three pieces of shit that brutalized Lucia has been set for February 7th, 2023. Mm. I couldn't find any info about the hearing into the three judges, though. I'm not sure where that landed. God. And that is the story of Lucia Perez Montero and Ni Una Menos. Wow. Um, That's an important story to tell. Um, Fuck. I'm really sorry. That is devastating. I'm really no, sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, if I can't sit with that, then I shouldn't have a true crime podcast. Um, that's fucking devastating. It is so similar to Junko. Um, so similar. And it was sort of, it was the Yakuza. Yep. Which is, I, it, uh, yeah, I just, it's so, it's so fucking awful. I so think, awful. I think that a lot of times... We for like, I don't think we forget. I don't think you and I forget. I don't think a lot of women forget, but I think the world in general doesn't realize how dangerous to your health it is just to be a woman. Uh, Right. Yeah. You know, like we were talking on the last, a couple episodes back when you were telling the story of um, Ingrid Mm -hmm. and you were like, oh my God, online dating is just another thing to, you know, be afraid of. And it's like, but you know, the chances, and when I said the chances are low and you're like, but the chances are there. And I'm like, but the chances are there just existing. Like, this is what I mean. Like, this is what I'm Mm -hmm. talking about. I don't know a single woman who did not at least at the very bare minimum, at least once in her life, wasn't afraid of a man. Oh God. Yeah. Bare minimum, at least one time. I've lost track. Um, And I've said too, like you and I are both really lucky to have um, partners who are willing to listen and learn and grow and evolve and do better. Because I have said to Michael more than once, like, I don't need more women as my allies. I need men as my allies. I need men to tell other men to fucking knock it off. Like, if you're out with your buddies and they're catcalling, you need to have the courage to say, dude, that's not fucking cool. Stop. Yeah. That's fucking that's gross. Fucking cool. Yeah, they don't understand that just that is scary. Yep. And I don't know how to get there. I guess one fucking decent man at a time. I don't know. I, don't <laughs> yeah, know I mean, what the, yeah. You know, tell your yeah. friends. Yeah. Tell your friends <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, God. 
So wow, that um, is fucking devastating. I'm sorry, sister, but you know, you gave me a soapbox, so I took it. I I had to step yeah, I, yeah. I had to step up onto it. So uh I love you, Chaos Kids, and uh I'm sorry sometimes sometimes we have to take our medicine. Oh my god. You know what I'm thinking? You might mm. add a little bit of an intro when you edit this episode before the episode even like fully starts that, that just, this one is particularly tough. Yeah. yeah. I, I will. I'm sorry. I, I feel bad. Why? No, I don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. You know what? The people that feel bad are Lucia's mom and her dad and her brother and her friends. And it deserves to be told. I know. Yeah. It's okay. I just, Mm. I found the story and I started to write it and it was like, there's not a lot here, but it seemed like such an important story. And then when I found out about the Ni Una Menos and like started reading it, I was like, this is the thing. Like, I have to do this. I have to do this whole, like, it's not just Lucia, like it is, but it's not. And I need to do like the whole story. I need to do, I need to tell all of it. Absolutely. No, I'm glad you did. Um, I just poured myself some more wine. Okay. Uh, we're going to shake that off uh, as much as we can. Not really. Okay. Uh, do you want to hear about the Pepsi point scandal or <laughs> did you watch this on the Netflix? Cause I watched this on the Netflix and it's fucking great. No, I didn't watch anything. No. Oh really? Oh yes. Tell mm-hmm. me about it. I want to hear your version of it. Cause I, they have a, there's a, ne- <laughs> there's a Netflix o- do- documentary out about it and it's fucking really? great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so you just like organically I, found this and you didn't know about yeah. the Netflix show. Okay. No, this is great. I've this not is great. seen the Netflix show, but maybe I'll watch it. So yeah, you should. It's fun. We're going to the mid nineties, which was a great time to be alive, by the mid-90s. way. Mid nineties. There was like, there was mm-hmm. like this moment in the mid nineties when it was like, I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That shit was great in the nineties. It was 90s. like five minutes in the mid nineties when it, everything. Yeah. For changed. a hot second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The ozone, like the hole in the ozone got fixed and we weren't mm-hmm. and like the, and like, and like the Berlin wall had come down. Like, Nirvana released Nevermind. Right. I Mikhail mean, what a time and, to be and alive. Ronnie were like friends. <laughs> like Russia wasn't our enemy anymore. Like the missiles weren't on high alert. It was like, yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. Well, uh, for one uh, company that wasn't doing so hot in the 90s was Pepsi because Coca-Cola was crushing it in sales and Pepsi needed to find a way to set themselves apart and to appeal to a younger crowd. Okay. I'm sorry. I need to pause here real quick. Uh Uh-huh. Coke or Pepsi? Well, first off, I don't like soda at all. I know, but but if you had to choose, gun to your head. (sighs) Coke. Really? Pepsi's you know, I'm, too sweet. I, I feel the opposite. I am totally Pepsi all the fucking way. Although when I've seen those videos where they're p- pouring Coca-Cola on like a super dirty car battery and then it's magically clean, it's upsetting. It's like, well, I, mean, I don't I think, think I should be ingesting that. <laughs> I think Pe- I think Pepsi would do that too. I don't think it has anything mm. to do with the flavor in the pop. I think it's the pop. Well, also I'm pretty sure that Coca-Cola is owned by the Mormons. No, I think that's Pepsi. <laughs> really? I think yeah. it's Coke. Okay, no, Google it. I'll keep going. Okay, keep going. <laughs> okay, keep going. So um, in March of 1995, Pepsi launched the Pepsi Stuff promotional campaign. Mm-hmm. And this would allow customers to collect points with their purchases, and the points would then be used to re- redeem prizes. Right. Stuff. It's like Camel Bucks or Marlboro Miles. Uh-huh. And I have a, I have a sidebar about this. Don't let me forget. So the slogan was drink Pepsi, get stuff. Mm -hmm. Genius. Mm -hmm. The commercial advertising the campaign shows like three hot teenage, I say hot because they're actually our age now, but three hot teenage (laughs) boys in Pepsi t-shirts and below it, it says like t-shirt 75 points. Right. Right. Then it shows the hot boy in a leather jacket and it says leather jacket, 1,450 Pepsi points. That's a lot of points. Uh huh. Yeah. Then he puts on his sunglasses and it says shades, 175 Pepsi points. And then you hear the announcer and it's introducing the new Pepsi stuff catalog. 
Then it cuts to three boys are in front of their high school drinking Pepsi and looking through their Pepsi stuff catalog when something flies overhead. And it's a jet, a military aircraft Harrier jet. Uh-huh. And it, uh-huh, it lands at the high school. Fuck yeah, it and does. The pil- uh-huh. And the pilot is the hot boy. And they're all like, whoa. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the caption below that says, Harrier Jet, 7 million Pepsi points. Whoa, let's go get Pepsis. hmm mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> of course, this uh, was meant to be hyperbolic, but <laughs> t- 21-year-old business student John Leonard didn't think so. <laughs> was he 21? Yeah. hmm I think so. Okay, my aside before I forget, yeah. I had to Google and confirm that um, Pepsi owns Mountain Dew. And when in at the same time, 1990-something, remember I had the Mountain Dew pager from Vague. points? Vaguely. I think it was the Pepsi stuff thing, only it was Mountain Dew points specifically. Oh. And it was a black pager and it said Mountain Dew on the side in green, which was super dorky. So I took a black Sharpie and colored over it so that it would just be a regular <laughs> pager. And I was fucking hot shit because I had a pager at like 15. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was the thing. I, I, you know what? Side, sidebar to the sidebar. I absolutely collected camel bucks for a really long time. And I actually did catch them in for things. What like, did you get? Um, well, I don't know if I have it anymore. I used to have it up until not that long ago. I had, I never used it. I, I don't know if I still have it. I might still have it somewhere. It was a Zippo lighter with the camel logo on it, but it also had this little base, like this, like heavy metal, like pewter base that it sat in like that to like hold it. Like it was a whole fancy Zippo stand. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And it was so funny is that, you know, I have the cake Bible, which is the cookbook I use for all my cake making Mm -hmm. and the bookmark quote unquote that I have in my cake Bible is a camel book. Holy shit. How long have you had that? A long time. Yeah. It's been a long time since you smoked cigarettes. A really wow. long time. It's been even longer God. since I collect, since they had camel bucks, let alone I was collecting them. No shit. Wow, sister. Mm-hmm. Wow. I have one it's camel like buck artifact. left to my name. I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Good for you. Yep. I wish I still had my Mountain Dew pager. No shit. Okay. So. <laughs> So John's like, nay, nay. And uh, so he goes and gets the Pepsi stuff catalog and he sees there are 53 items available in total, but no jet. But he decides that since it was clearly advertised in the commercial, that it was still an option. And he knows there's no way that he can actually collect 7 million Pepsi points, but he sees in the back of the catalog a little message that says, quote, if a customer doesn't have enough Pepsi points to order the item they want, they can buy Pepsi points for 10 cents a piece. Okay. And you have to have at least 15 Pepsi Pepsi points first, and then you can purchase points. Okay. That's easy. 15 Pepsi points should be easy to get, right? Like that's like what? Is like, it, a, like a couple cases? Get, like a couple yeah, of cases? Yeah. Do you get like a point on like a, like a, it's not on the can. It's probably no, I think they're the on those on, on the case. cardboard cases. And I, you get like, I don't know, one or five points on a, on a case. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, John here hits up five wealthy investors and ends up collecting a total of $700,000. He's a good uh, business student. And on March 27th, 1996, he places his order in the Pepsi points catalog. He showed proof of his 15 Pepsi points and enclosed a check for $700,008.50. Sure. And under the item column, he wrote one jet. (laughs) <laughs> thank you <laughs> and under total points i'll column, take one wrote, jet, please <laughs> seven million <laughs> uh, oh my god so about a month and a half later in early may pepsi returned to john's check with a letter that was like um the item that you requested is not part of the pepsi stuff collection it's not included in the catalog or on the order form and only catalog merchandise can be redeemed under this program the jet in the commercial is just fanciful and it's simply 
is simply included to create a humorous and entertaining ad. We apologize for any misunderstanding or confusion that you may have experienced and are enclosing some free product coupons for you. (laughs) (laughs) Always with the coupons. I know. Here, have two cases of Pepsi on us. Mm-hmm. Get Cost more points. Get nothing. Cost them get the shades. Nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So John was pissed. So he gets in touch with his attorney, which he already had. Like this kid, he's twenty one years old, and he already like just has a retur- an attorney on retainer or something. Well, isn't one? Of, I think one of the investors was helping him. Oh, I think for that, sure. Yeah, I think one of these mm-hmm. the investor guys actually like had you know tapped an attorney for them. Oh, totally. Because they're all thinking they're going to like. Oh, they're going to get a Harrier jet for $700,000. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. They have like a whole plan for that. Yeah. Oh, totally. So his attorney writes a letter back to Pepsi that says, quote, your letter on May 7th, 1996 is totally unacceptable. We have reviewed the videotape of the Pepsi stuff commercial, and it clearly offers the jet for 7 million, million Pepsi points. Our client followed your rules explicitly. This is a formal demand that you honor your commitment and make immediate arrangements to transfer the jet to our client. If we do not receive transfer instructions with 10, within 10 business days of the date of this letter, you will leave us no choice but to file an appropriate action against Pepsi. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so- Lawyer's going to lawyer. <laughs> play is going to play. Uh-huh. So the actual cost of this jet is $33.8 million. <laughs> uh- also, it's like... It's like a military vehicle. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. It's like that, a U.S. military, <laughs> like, like classified, whatever. I don't know what word to use. I don't know anything about the military, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not for civilian consumption. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, this is not like the jets that are for civilian consumption. This is no. not an average jet. No. No. God. So the letter goes to Pepsi and to the company that made the commercial. And the president of the ad company is pissed. And he responded basically saying, there's no way you actually thought we were going to give you a jet for Pepsi points. The commercial was clearly a joke and you knew it. But John and his attorneys weren't laughing. So they go to court. Yep. They sued Pepsi for breach of contract, fraud, deceptive and unfair trade practices, and misleading advertising. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Get it. Uh. Go after Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> so the case drags on and on with motions being filed back and forth, and it never actually went to trial. And eventually, John's attorneys filed a motion to dismiss without prejudice, which means that it could be brought back later. Oh, just in case. Yeah. Like, we'll, uh, we'll let this we'll go for now. We'll for now. But right. Don't, yeah. Uh-huh. But don't think that we aren't thinking about coming back for you. <laughs> this isn't over yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll have my jet. I'll see yes. you in court. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. So the judge grants this motion only on the condition that John pays some of Pepsi's attorney fees. What? And, uh-huh. A year later, he was ordered to pay a little over $88,000 in Pepsi's attorney's fees within 30 days. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he obviously didn't have that, especially no. within 30 days. So when he misses the deadline... The judge says you can either pay or withdraw your motion to dismiss without prejudice and file a motion to dismiss with prejudice. So by now, John had gotten a new attorney and the story had made headlines and the U.S. government released a statement. A spokesperson for the Pentagon is like, uh, BT dubs, this is a $33 million jet and their military aircraft and a member of the public can't buy one. And if they did, we would have to like um, basically make it not military grade, which means that it wouldn't do anything except be parked. Right. Because <laughs> I love because you can't. You have no authority to fly this thing around, and it won't have any of the weaponry that it comes like stocked with. 
But Naomi, hot boy came to to school in it <laughs> with his shades and his Pepsi leather jacket. <laughs> it's so 1995. Oh my! Everyone's hair is blowing, and they're all like, "Whoa!" <laughs> This was the beginning. This was the beginning of the era of extreme. Mm -hmm. Everything was extreme. Mm -hmm. Like energy drinks started coming out. Oh, yeah. Extreme sports blew up. Everything was extreme. (laughs) Extreme. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I blame Pepsi. I do too. Pepsi started it all with the jet (laughs) and the Pepsi points. So on February 22nd, 1999, after three years of this legal bullshit, his attorneys agreed to file a motion to dismiss with prejudice and Pepsi agreed to not go after John for attorney fees. Great. And the judge granted the motion and cited, quote, the stuff commercial was not an actual offering of what they had and no reasonable person would think so. Wow. Wow. That story still, I watched that whole Netflix series and it still cracks me up. Like the story oh still cracks me up. I oh. highly recommend you go and watch it because they interview him, the guy who backed him, the lawyer. They interview some of the guys from the ad company that came up with the ad. Like they go into some shit that went down in like, oh fuck, I can't remember if it was Thailand. It was one of the like Pacific, I like Pacific one of those specific Asian countries, uh, smaller mm-hmm. ones where there was a big, like there was a whole mess over there that Pepsi got into with another contest they did in that country, trying to drum up sales. Like there is an ad version of, there is a version of the ad that had the, the Harrier jet in it that they ran in Canada. And in oh. Canada, they actually did print a disclaimer underneath those points for the carry for the Harrier jet. Yeah. That's all they had to do. And they like, used, okay. they were trying and they tried to use that in the lawsuit is like, Hey, you knew what you were doing because in Canada you had a disclaimer, oh. but in the U S you did not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good. It's good. You should go watch it. I think you'd really enjoy I it. I think I will. I mm-hmm. feel like I sort of love John Leonard. Yeah, no, John um, Leonard's from like Bellevue. Really? Yes. Or Seattle oh, Shoreline. He's from around here. Oh my God, that's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Wow. God, I really wanted to see him get that jet. I know. I mean, I kind of was rooting for him the whole time. Yeah. I like, game was that too. system. Game that yeah, system. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pepsi can afford it. I mean, they maybe could have. They maybe yeah. could have. He was 21 years old. I mean, I mean, is he like some kind of Doogie Howser? Basically, I, mean, what did I we guess. Do? I yeah. Don't, yeah, I don't know. It's fucking I don't know. incredible. Good well, for you. <laughs> Sissy, I'm so glad you did that story. <laughs> <laughs> I need, we needed a palate cleanse. And you know what? We a Pepsi, needed a palate cleanser. A Pepsi is always the right palate cleanse. This, sure. This podcast not brought to you by PepsiCo. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> brought to you by Harrier Jets. <laughs> Oh, well, we did it. We made it we through. Did it. <laughs> wow, sister. That was cool. Um, did you have anything for the good of the order? Um, let's see. Oh, a uh, tinfoil top hat if you're local will be playing at the Blue Moon Tavern in the U District on February 21st. It is a cool old spot. Um, it's worth going just because there's going to be a whole a lineup of live uh, indie artists. That's awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Come check it that out. Yeah. Great. And, um, what about you know, you? per usual, you can find Crime, Wine, and Chaos on all the socials. we got the Facebook. we got the Instagram. we got the Twitters. We've got a website. You can go to our website, crimewineandchaos.com, and you can send us messages um, at crimewineandchaos at gmail.com. And yeah. you can follow me on the Twitters. And, oh, hey, go and, um, like, rate us on your podcast app, especially if you're on an Apple phone, because then we can – Get the Apple numbers. Give us the Apple numbers, you guys. Give us we the Apple those. numbers. Please. Give me, give me, yes, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's a lot of points. <laughs> I want, I want, I need, I need. <laughs> <laughs> well, sister, I fucking well, love you. I love you too. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Good so God. So As sorry. you should. I'm so sorry. You know what? But that really was ultimately really fucking Hey, on it. Bye. 
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Crime, Wine, and Chaos. The podcast art was done by Joshua M. Davis. Music by Paul Abner. You can find us on Facebook at Crime, Wine, and Chaos, on Instagram at Crime, Wine, and Chaos Pod, or check out our website at crimewineandchaos.com. Cheers! Hot Boy came to school in it.